Hello everyone, welcome to the video. In today's video, we are going to discuss about different configuration files which are necessary to run the .NET based applications. So the configuration files which we are going to look today are a machine.config file which is basically a system or server level configuration file and apart from that we are going to look about few of the application level configuration files which are app.config, web.config, appsetting.json file. Let's move ahead. App.config file is basically used in those applications which are client installable or uh, installable on Windows Server like console application, Windows services or Windows application including window form and WPF. Other than that, web.config is basically used in web application like traditional ASP.NET web form and ASP.NET MVC. And it is also used in WCF services and web APIs. AppSetting.json file is basically used in the latest development technology of .NET, which is the .NET Core CLR. The application which are built using .NET Core CLR like web applications, web APIs and Windows services use AppSetting.json file. AppSetting.json file is a simple JSON file which consists of a JSON object in which every configuration property is in the form of a QE value pair stuff. So let's discuss about machine.config file. Machine.config file is basically resides at the top in the configuration file level hierarchy. If we create a configuration file level hierarchy, it is the topmost file or we can also say that it is a root level file for entire configuration. On our machine, there will be only one machine.config file exist specific to the .NET Framework version. There can be no two files for a single .NET Framework versions. It consists of a global configuration settings which are common for all the applications which are running onto the server or onto the machine. Even on our personal machine also, uh, applications if you are running, it takes the configuration from machine.config file. It is also called as a machine level configuration file because it consists of the global configuration information. That's why it is called as a machine level config file. Without machine.config file, any of our .NET applications won't run. Here I'm not talking about .NET Core based application because .NET Core is basically a platform independent stuff. So the concept of machine level configuration is a little bit useless in this con context. We can override the configuration present in machine.config file for our application by doing the application level configuration in web.config or app.config. It depends on our application that which config file it consists of. All the configuration information of the machine.config file is basically read only or accessible for our applications but cannot be modified uh, by application. We can modify them but we need the proper administration privilege for that. When machine.config file will be available on our machine? It will be available when we'll install .NET Framework or any version of the Visual Studio on our machine. So this is the path of the machine.config file. It resides in C drive in Windows folder in Microsoft.NET folder. So let's see the file. So here are two folders. Basically our application will have two modes of operation, 32-bit mode or 64-bit mode. Whatever mode we will select for our application, it will take the configuration from the according folder. So let me show you in the application first. We have two folders. One is for 86 for 32 bit and another one is 64 for 64 bit. So for 32 bit, the configuration will be taken from framework folder and for 64 bit configuration will be taken from the 64 bit folder. Here we have different versions. So from 2.0 to 3.5 version of the .NET framework, the configuration will be taken from this folder 2.0.5. 0727 and from 4.0 to 4.5 the configuration will be taken from this folder so both of these folders will have a config folder inside that which in turn consists of the machine.config file and a root web.config file this root web.config file is useful for running the web applications if our web application is not having any web.config file so i have copied machine.config file uh, here So this is the basic common property which we always used to see in our application. This is a connection string which we used to connect to the database. So this property I'm showing you. So it will be a little bit easier to relate. So this configuration settings will be inherited from here. As you see all the properties that we used to see in our application in web.config file, they are inherited from here. So as I told you from 2.0 to 3.5, I have shown you the folder that from which folder it will take the configuration 
accordingly for same we have for 64 bit and same we have for 32 bit and 4.5 4.2 to 4.5 for 32 bit and 64 bit i have also shown you the folder for that also app.config file is basically used for the applications which are client installable and web.config file is used for the application which are basically the web application both of these files are basically the xml document which are case sensitive in nature it help us to store or configure our application or we can say that it consists of the application level configuration information we can have only one web.config file in our web applications whether it is a traditional web form or mvc based application at a same directory but at different directories our application can afford multiple web.config files let me show you an example for that I have a default MVC based application here if you see on root level there is an application level web config file and for razor pages that is uh, basically the view pages there is one more config file resides in the views folder that here it consists of the configuration regarding the web pages which we used in MVC based applications so as you see here we can afford multiple web.config files in our application but not on the same directory they should reside in different directories here the path is same for the web.config file as i shown you the web.config file at the same place where we have seen the machine.config file it is basically the root web.config file uh, even though if our application is not having the web.config file we can run our applications but the restriction only we have is we cannot run our application in debugging mode and how it will work it will take the configuration from machine.config file and root web.config file if you want to see the hierarchy the hierarchy will be somehow machine.config file is at the top after that we have the root web.config file and after that we have our applications web.config file so we have the global configuration information in machine.config file and some of the properties which are overridden for a web application are available in web.config file which further inherited by our application level web.config file so if in case our application is not having any web.config file it will automatically take its configuration from machine.config and root web.config file so that's all regarding some of the configuration related files which we used in our dotnet based application that's all from my side thank you for watching the video please like share and subscribe this is coding studio thank you everyone